You're listening to The Adventuring Party, talking about gaming the Irish way. Well, if you were actually to go through the logic of your argument, you would see that you are arguing against yourself, and therefore your entire approach to this debate is suspect, uh, uh, good why sir. Why don't you take and an approach at my ass? Yeah. You're both wrong, and you should you, you should both feel bad about it. <sighs> Let's do it. Welcome to the party. <laughs> I'm Shane. I'm Dave. And I'm still Savage Mick, God darn it. So, today we have come here to uh, address the, the one of the most important topics in gaming, having arguments. Or, or, or why it shouldn't? It is important. Maybe? I don't know. I don't, I don't, can't we just all get along? No. Can't we find some no, way of avoiding all these... Fights, they're like they're. Oh, well, clearly, the if we just, if we just write the rules really, really hard, <laughs> then the arguments will go away. Then people won't read around. them. <laughs> oh, now, well, now I understand why I'm here. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, can rules prevent arguments? How much um, arguing is allowed? When's it right to argue? Can we talk and? I mean, I know that can we talk about arguments between characters as like positive stuff like that? Yeah, like, these are all these are all relative ways of looking at this. Relevant ways of looking at this probably because there's I don't want to say there's two types of people, but there's definitely two strong trends and things. One is the archetype of peacemaking, where like argument is always bad and. If we avoid arguments, we will have better activities, better games in this case. Either some would say, like, no, argument is the game. Having the back and forth of debate is the lifeblood of the hobby. We have to have arguments. Otherwise, it's just rolling dice and congratulating each other. Um, I love being congratulated I'm going to be, contra- I'm going to be contrarian and say neither extreme is good. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to th- thread a nuanced path with uh, illuminating examples. Ooh. Maybe, oh. maybe. I won't argue with that. Argument. I will. Oh no. Argument, argument, argument. What's the definition of an argument? Uh, uh, Oxford English Dictionary, which I think I've just looked up, is says an exchange of diverging or opposite views, typically a heated <laughs> or angry one. A reason or set of reasons given in support of an idea, action or theory. So the first one's kind of what we're talking about. I, and I would say it is a definition of two parts. An exchange of diverging or opposite views. And then, you know, okay, sometimes it could be colored by anger or disagreement or, or passion. And that's kind of... And when, you, when we use the word argument, we kind of tend to think about that second part first. But mm. it's important. I think the that first... That first camp, that second camp. That camp who says, hey, look. No, that camp says, hey, look, this is the game. This is the exchange of ideas. This is how we crossbreed our fun. Like that's um, that's probably the ideal. But yeah, we just tend to kind of pick our corner and screw up our, our little faces and shout um, if our barbarian attack kind of thing is not being adju- adjudicated in our favor. Isn't it always coincidental that the view you ha- you know that one holds it happens to be the completely correct one? In my experience, no, mm. no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like people, if you come to, if you come to it, we're still very high level here. If you come to this uh, discourse with uh, join our Discord, <laughs> got that one in earlier for if discourse. You, if you come to this discourse with your mind completely made up and allowing no possibility that it will be changed, then yeah, I think you're uh, you're going to sort of have two people just shouting at each other, well, clearly I'm right and clearly you're wrong. And if, you, mm-hmm. if, if they're eloquent, they might elaborate on the reasons why they're right, the other person's wrong. Or they might just call them a duty head, mm. which is where lots of my arguments end up. But I spend a lot of time with an eight-year-old, and damn, <laughs> he's got me on the duty head thing. I mean, <laughs> he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. How's, how is it constructive to argue at a game? And and about what? Um, 
well, he well people can believe in their points quite strongly, and they can that that can be for good reasons or what seem like good reasons. So, um, if somebody, um, it can be particularly pertinent when character when somebody feels aggrieved that their character is getting the short end of the stick, as in, oh, you like you you know. You, <clears throat> With this rule interpretation, you're screwing over my character, and my character is on the verge of, of dying. Like, oh, oh I, you know, somebody's going to argue about that more than likely. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but then some might say, oh, it's good sportsmanship for you to just accept your character's death. And then there sort of comes an, an, uh, an argument about is the point of a given game the sportsmanship of playing quote unquote correctly versus the personal experience of the of the play um and depending on who you are in relation to the game you may have very different uh takes on what that means like the designer of the game when I came up with all these rules people are arguing over will probably be more heavily invested in the game as a whole like i have to make my arguments and make my rules based on what's going to work for the thousands of players who are going to play this game whereas a person at the table arguing with you know another person at the table is probably thinking about uh the you know their own results and in between you'll probably have a lot of people who are saying Right, well, this is all very well good for that person, and that's all very well good for this game entire, but we're thinking about the group, the play, like, and what argument is best for, you know, the the game at the table and the people around that table. Hmm. And that's, so, so, those are sort of the extreme, the extreme points in the sort of middle where, you know, no, from the each person's perspective, each one has right. Well, that's not where most argument comes from. Oh, sure. I'm. Oh, sorry, Mick. No, it's you. Just uh, reflecting on that idea that you've got to kind of look. People are always invested in their characters. Uh, I don't think people are invested enough in their games as a whole. Mm. I, I think pe- people mm. tend to lose sight of the health of the game uh, and their their role in it as either GM or player. GM, uh, yep. GMs get over investing games for other reasons, but definitely it's easy to understand why arguments arise when the game, the game world, or the circumstances aren't going with the player and, pe- and or with the character, and the player. Yeah, it's some, like I get why people get like that, but I think it's we could avoid a lot of these arguments if we do step back from our investment in our characters and get a bit more invested in our game as a whole. Dave. Yeah, um, I'm just. Th- I was just thinking about previous arguments I've been in at tables, and one of the quickest ways to get an argument going as a GM is if you try to introduce house rules uh, <laughs> mid-campaign and don't do it very carefully, uh, especially if said house rules are perceived to screw over players. <laughs> well, I'd, and I would I, see that as like in terms of being careful about it. I, you you got to kind of be careful about any time you try and stick a new appendage in a different uh, orifice, and don't fucking ask first. Excuse my French. Um, oh sure, yeah, um, <laughs> that's that's where. Like, if you if you've got a house rule you really want to try, then maybe just talk to your partners first. Yeah. Oh sure. I, I, I you know personally, I try to to sort out any house rules before a campaign begins, but I suppose. I'm probably using the term too liberally. Um, Stuff like interpretation of rules, um, uh, rulings on certain scenarios, rulings on how certain things interact, which aren't necessarily covered by game rules, that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Which is less predictable. Well, I think that's that's a great opportunity to, to go back to one of the first things that sort of sparked this debate or this topic. Um, surely there shouldn't be any arguments over the rules. They're the rules, right? Everyone understands the rules. No, they Shane, don't. Shane, what would you say to that? <laughs> um, well, the reason I brought up rules in relation to arguments in the first place is because I'm, I'm curious 
how much of what we consider modern game design is intended to head off arguments. Like, you have examples like, let's stick with RPGs for now, because I don't have any great board game examples, but original D&D was... Sorry, I can think of a good board game example, but go ahead. Okay, I was just saying, original D&D, relatively rules light. Mm. Super (laughs) rules light uh, by some arms, where almost everything was just decided by the GM, and there was... Actually, I think there were two slightly different combat systems that had to be worked between, and then I think a third one was put in the first supplement. And oh, so, this sounds wonderfully light. Wonderful okay. Light. Mm. <laughs> uh, well, the, the idea is that you chose which one you were doing. Fair enough. But Fair enough. You've, the, the the point was, like everything was interpretable, and everything was something that. Um, Something that you you know you could decide at play, and this seemed fine for Gygax, who ha- who grew up in the uh, wargaming space, where having a referee uh, sort of fixed everything. Mm. Yeah. But when it came out into the world, Gygax seems to have been utterly shocked by all of a sudden people were just uh, coming up with their own interpretations of things, coming up with mad unbalanced house rules, and proudly publishing in fan magazines and this sort of led to the development of something like Advanced Dungeons and Dragons which very proudly uh, says that the main point of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is to um, define how this fantasy world works and set in stone how the rules should go and you know or it has a much less emphasis on GM interpretation oh, and more on, you know, legitimizing DM arbitrariness. Um, oh, dear, nice dear. try, and Gary. I, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I mean, the seeds of, uh, the seeds of, our, of, of our, uh, doom were, were planted so, so early. <laughs> but like, this leads to the thing where like originally D and D was pretty, it was fairly light and open. And by even by the 90s, it had a massive reputation as being a clunky uh, chunk fest of a game. And I have uh, have to wonder, is was that Play- was one of the mm. big drivers in that to prevent arguments and ambiguity? It, they, well, kept, I, they kept slapping rules on to... Uh, didn't they used to like publish uh, clarifications on rule questions in... Dungeon, dragon, yeah. A dragon magazine, yeah. yeah. Like, and you, yeah, you get yeah. go back and read them now. It's like, man, these, uh, yeah. like someone took the time to put this into print. Uh, I gotta go search replies on Twitter now to get a, <laughs> to get an official sort of uh, take on a rules interpretation. And now, Dragon Magazine is just basically a bunch of. It used to be a bunch of ads for different games. Now it's just a bunch of ads for five e, for official five E supplements. So, mm. I don't know if we've improved. Um, but, yeah, it's just like, they used to have, even inside, even inside uh, Watsi, you'd have Dragon Magazine as this sort of source of official subsystems, or semi-official subsystems, and then all the rulings would be handed by the sage advice. Mm. And there was, there was sort of an industry of, no, we will, find things for you. you you just buy dragon magazine every month and we'll we'll eventually suit all your needs and there will but be no need that for just arguments more arguments because a player who's you know some players bought the magazine and they're reading it and they go ah now i can use I, this against my gm because he's, he's had a different thing but i that, now i've got the proof come on let's go and they uh, come in with the magazine rolled up like a truncheon for the next session it's like see See, I was uh, right. You were wrong, and I know more about the game than you do. And and you're you're not even a very good GM, anyways. And ah, oh god, that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just, I just and think, then, sorry, uh, uh, yeah. The the a, just thinking back to the AD and D campaigns I was in. Uh, yes, I was in a few. Um, every single one of them had fairly extensive house rules. Yeah, because you uh, like it's like our fellow host um, Owen will always say like. What do you want? I'm going to attempt my best. 
Owen impression now. Hi, Owen. Hope you listen. What is it you want? Rules or rulings? Rules or rulings, huh? Huh? <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible. <laughs> I'm hungover, folks. Uh, Leave me alone. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... <sighs> publishing it somewhere, finding it on Twitter, uh, doesn't necessarily help. In fact, it's the other end of the introducing. Like it's it's the player equivalent of suddenly slipping a house rule uh, mm. up your nose. Family uh, friend. By the way, books. folks, bad idea. Don't bad don't idea. try to slip a house rule. Anything up someone's nose without asking first, and then and showing up with an external sage, uh, an, an authority, uh, who you know about, and maybe your your GM or your other uh, your other players in the group don't know about. Is the kind of player equivalent like see I've got gotcha. you because it's it's gotchas mm. basically, um, and even if you have the right answer, if Gary Gary Bartholomew Gygax himself descended from whatever gilded throne he now sits on, uh, and looked over your shoulder and went no nope, works like this do this this way. Why now? At, the, at, at this point, this is when the OSR people just pull out like the end of the original Dungeons and Dragons, where you say, "But Gary, you said right here that uh, the GM is trying to make up whatever they want." And uh, oh, checkmate, just, zombie yeah, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just call, just call a, a, count, a council, possibly in some city like Nicaea, and be done. With it. <laughs> mm. but look, it, does, it doesn't oh, yeah, matter. That solved all of the problem. There you go. Yeah, it, it, do, it doesn't matter because what you haven't done is prepped the you know you haven't, you haven't primed the pump on this one you can't oh. just bring the you can't just bring the rule in or you can't just arrive with the right answer quotation marks you have to get people to buy in on your interpretation which is where we go back to the the first part of of uh, defining the argument so so mm. let's assume that you're everyone's mature enough not to simply start having a fight sticking fingers up noses and shouting duty head. And now you've got something you want to bring to your players or something you want to make your GM aware of uh, and persuade them to your way of interpreting or seeing things. What's the best way to go forward? How do you have that argument in the platonic sense? I think um, I use that right. Well, don't start shouting at people is a good step. Uh, good, you know, um, because, you know, that just raises hackles and makes people defensive. Um... If yeah, stating I, your I, goals, I think is a big one. Like mm, I said, we, we, yeah. we're you're talking there a minute ago about buy-in, yeah. and I've I've argued before that one of the problems with a lot of rules-heavy things is that they say what the rule is, but they don't say why. Whereas mm, the logic I think is important. If, if, yeah, if you're at the table in front of the person, you can you can say why you're arguing this way. So it's like, what do you hope to achieve by having this argument? And honestly, I think saying like, you should state your goals is possibly a good way to get rid of some bad faith arguments. So the person who mm. wants to argue for the sake of argument is like, if you, if you're very explicit that about happens. what you're trying to achieve with an argument, then the argument can be much easier to engage with. I you know, that. and yeah. If everyone explicit, uh, explicates their goals, then you understand what people have at stake and you can come to a compromise which achieves as many of the goals as you want. Because, again, ultimately, at the end of the day, 90% of arguments end in compromises anyway. Mm. Um, uh, spoiler alert for the real world. Is the GM always right? If we take the idea that, like, well, it's their game, you know? They've, the GM, uh-huh. GM, uh, sort of. We assume GM has this kind of uh, aura of ownership over the game. Uh, are they always right? Is it their way or the highway? And let's let's uh, assume they're reasonable and they're going to listen to your arguments. But ultimately, uh, they're going to be the arbiter of what happens. I yeah i I would go come down on that line as well. I I would like to think a GM is going to listen to a reasonable argument because if if for no other reason than a GM is human too, and not infallible, and could have, and, and not omniscient, and could have missed a particular way of interpreting a situation or a rule. 
and presenting that an alternative exp- exp- you know uh, interpretation might actually be helpful for them or at least they can look and go i don't think it works that it worked that way because x and y and a player feels they've been heard out and that's good even mm. if they don't get what they're looking for yeah yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> like i think there's a sort of it's one of those 90 percent things where it's like yeah like you when you signed up to a person's game um you sort of invest them with the a role of arbiter and renegotiating that halfway through a campaign is uh, no bueno but at the same time mm. dms are human and they're going to make mistakes and it's as long as you, uh, if you're if you keep things reasonable then arguing against them isn't unreasonable but at the end i think at the at the end things like it, yeah it is their game and if the argument is so grand that it's going to be make or break for a given player, um, then th- you should probably make that explicit. To be fair, and then that that you know hiding information in an argument is a good way to have the argument um, just go around in circles because people don't know what you actually want. Mm. Again, this is one of those indicators of someone arguing for the sake of arguing, is that they they just are they just have a fresh argument each time. Right. Yeah, Whereas, that does happens uh, too. Uh, happens yeah. too even. Yeah. The hell with those yeah, people. Was... I've probably been those people. Uh, I think I think it's that's definitely a good a big old takeaway for me today is that idea that look just state what instead of stating the reasons why you're right, what is it you're hoping to get from this? Uh, and the stakes are low, folks. Like it's you know, will the barbarian move that extra twenty feet uh, in any given opening round of combat? No. Uh, let's let's move. The before we end up saying something trite like talk to your players, <clears throat> never talk to your players. They, they don't know anything. God talk to players. characters. Let's talk about the characters talking to each other because characters should get in arguments. It is my contention all the time about all sorts of different things, but they have to keep the kind of the rule of drama in mind. The rule of drama is don't be boring. Um, what do you think about characters? Yeah. Like, if, if everyone's got the big boy pants on, it's time for our characters to have arguments. Um, yeah, it, it happens. Um, it dep- it See, yeah, you can have games which are tightly focused, uh, where the everything from character creation to gameplay to GM decisions is, is, is geared towards, or at least intended to be geared towards, we are doing... We are doing a game which where X happens, whether that be dungeon crawling or social encounters or what have you. Most games aren't that tightly focused, uh, so you're going to have, I suppose, wiggle room for uh, different goals to, to emerge. And when you have room for different goals to emerge, uh, like as in most games and in most scenarios with any hint of verisimilitude, you're going to have characters having different opinions on on this. Like it's rare you're going to have characters agreeing on every course of action wholeheartedly every single time, um, with and and players as well. So I think it's inevitable and even healthy for a certain amount of debate, maybe even argument, to emerge over what do we do. Well, my thought is like. How long is this argument going to take, and how many members of the party are going to be involved in it? Mm. Because if it's just two people reiterating the same argument for the seventh time, and everyone else is getting a little bored, then that might not be quality use of table time. But if it's a, a nice rollicking, let's argue over this plan we're going to come on, and everyone has a bit of a pitch in, mm. then that's just more gameplay. That's there's nothing negative there. You you're just playing the game, except with slightly heated voices. That is an important distinction. I would, <clears throat> I'd make the I'd, I'd give the piece of advice um, based on what I've seen work, and that is, arguments between characters should largely be toothless, but entertaining. Mm. Uh, and, and they can overlap something else as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll break that down a little bit. Arguments between characters I don't think are meant to, are sh- probably shouldn't be used to determine what the players think should happen, You know what, the, what their plan is, what their approach to a situation is. They should probably happen once that has been decided 
and everybody at the table is is in lockstep. They're going. Well, we're going to try and tackle this by negotiating, or we think the best thing to do here is try and sneak in and steal the thing, and that's that's the play at the table is going on. But the character who is dissenting on this can continue to dissent while you sneak through the manners like I don't really think we should be doing this, guys. It seems like a bad idea. Shh, quiet. That's a- uh, or in the middle of combat, continue their uh, their high flute and philosophical argument with their uh, with their best friend, the elven archer, uh, while the two of them are hacking heads off. So instead of these mute combat rounds where people shout, "By Odin's beard!" or "I'll cut you in half," <clears throat> great battle cry that I'll cut, I'm going to use that. Instead, they're mm. they're using those few seconds to go, Ragnald. I still think it's uh, it's important to maintain a balance between. Economic and fiscal uh, rack slash uh, stuff like that. It's arguments between characters sh- will, I think, if used correctly, will bring a great deal of joy to the table. And I'd point you towards Gimli and Legolas as a great example uh, of two people who couldn't agree on anything, but were great friends and continued arguing over this, that, and the other throughout their adventures usually about things that had absolutely no bearing on what they were doing at the time. Yeah, absolutely. But then the, there's a certain question then about signaling, like what, what type of argument is like, like some, sometimes you'll, you'll often get when this really works, you'll, have, you'll just sort of have a couple of players who've synced up automatically and are just playing off each other, off the, off whatever, imagine prompts that they can uh, generate and just they'll just launch into one of these lovely scripted uh, not scripted but like unscripted but you know spontaneous uh, but in very enjoyable scenes of uh, the characters having a back and forth um, but yeah <laughs> but some 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 players will if someone starts having an in-character ar- argument over it, they'll freeze up and say, wait, what did I do wrong? Why are, why are you arguing with me? Why is the game falling apart? What did I do? And hmm. the, player, the other player just wanted to have a bit of in-character banter, but, they, but the first player completely missed any the signals and thinks they're in an actual, you know, for reals argument. I kind of find that one hard to, to give much credit to. If, I mean, are you that oblivious that when the player across the table says, well, you know, Ragnar looks at you sternly and says, I don't think we should eat these pickled feet. Is that, um, is that a moment when you lose all faith in, in your uh, position and, uh, and have to, uh, I don't know, run for a safe space? No, it, it should be pretty, like, use a funny voice. Say your character's name does this thing or approaches you with a stern look. Make it clear. I mean, it's, it's not hard to make it clear that you're making a distinction between what you, the player, thinks about something and what your character uh, is, uh, is thinking or feeling or uh, communicating in that moment. Um, I get, are you, I'm, I, f- I fail to... Uh, I reject the premise of your argument <laughs> that, that, there's, uh, um, that there's something I'm, there. Maybe if, I don't know. I like you, you, your, 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 counter, your counterpoint is that... Um, uh, the, the 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 good player having the good argument should have signals, and that's sort of my point too. It's like yeah. Yeah. some people just are very bad at picking up on signals. I guess is what I'm uh, is what I'm saying. What was it? And you should, you should. I'm sorry. I'm not going to write my jokes for stupid people. Um, <laughs> well, uh, they're, they're, that's your office. Is like, but you know, if you're going to have in character arguments, uh, make sure that they're appropriate to the table you're at, and. If there's someone who, for whatever reason, just can't stand arguments at the table, that it just yeah, the, irritates they, them they're overly. Not, they're not a valid partner with which to engage in that activity. And uh, you'll, you'll, yes, you'll have to explore the dynamics of your own table in your own time. But like, you're mm. sitting with these people maybe three or four hours a week, depending on what your schedule is. Like, you can't get to know any of them to, well enough to uh, to pull this off. I. I weep for your table. It, it like, yeah. It's it, a bit it, concerning. It's, it's an that, idea. Sorry, Shade. No, no. no it's just, I'm, I'm only saying is, it should, 
it's, it's some people it takes a, a cup a bit longer to get that dynamic going yep. especially if it's a new player in a group or if you're in say some form of open table or adventures league or something and you're you know you're good at uh, spontaneously coming up with stuff but maybe the others are less comfortable just I suppose the safe bet for- then is to st- is to practice this technique with mm. your GM first so the, oh, so yes. you're you're having these character arguments with a, an important NPC or quest giver or the guy who's just you know driving the river taxi um, and like your GM has your GM is presumably capable of discerning that you are you're, you know, you don't, and you don't have to be um, you don't have to be the word I'm looking worst for. Comes worst. Worst, worst comes to worst. Worst comes to worst. You can just say, uh, "Hey, do you want to have a little bit of an argument scene?" Because I think that would be cool. Yes. Like, yeah. there's no, there's no, yeah. it's not, it's not illegal to be explicit about. Exactly. I would like to have a little bit of drama now. Exactly. You know, For that's just this is enable so weird. drama. This is so weirdly like those kind of, you know, good, good sex talk, uh, piece of advice you hear. It's, it's, the parallels are. <laughs> Are becoming uncomfortably. I shouldn't have talked. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, but yes, it, again, it's about. Look, this is something I really want to try. I know it's a bit odd, but look, I mean, we're all we're all friends here. Let's give it a go. Um, but yes, ar- argument. So, and uh, the the other part of your your kind of reaction. How much time is this going to take? Absolutely, it has to be balanced against all the other things that you're trying to get done. In, which is why I think it should happen during things like combat or sneaking scenes, or whatever. Dice are being rolled. That doesn't mean you can't talk about other things that give a certain texture to the uh, to the encounter. You'll probably not remember the tenth time or the hundredth time you guys, you know, went down a ten foot wide corridor. But you'll probably remember that one exchange where we were sneaking through the dungeon and the cleric and the ranger just would not shut up about the best way to kill an orc. Uh, you know, it wasn't germane to the dungeon. It was a dungeon full of kobolds. Uh, but, it, it, you know, we, we'll always remember that exchange. And, you know, fingers crossed there'll be something, some pithy remark that comes out of it that gets echoed back and forth across the table for the rest of the campaign. Uh, that's, I think that is the benefit of in-character arguments, that it lends, it gives colour and texture to what would otherwise be relatively mundane things to do at the table. Right, mm. and it, what's we reader digest style had some top notes at the start of this. What other kind of arguments should we consider before we? Uh... I just wanted to maybe generalize because I say RPGs have the advantage of there is one player who is sort of nominated as uh, the final arbiter who knows the table best, better than any game designer, and can make the final decision <laughs> what's right for a table. Right, but. There's not always context for, uh, for this, like, um, like board games. Oh, board games, board games. Monopoly, Monopoly. <clears throat> I knew it. How how often have you had when you were ten? How often have you had to fight over the rules of Monopoly? Because no one was actually using the rules of Monopoly. So this goes back oh, to God, the idea yeah. that if you actually had rules that were good rules, you wouldn't need to argue. Monopoly has many, many rules flaws. That is an episode in itself. <laughs> yeah, but I just sort of interject there. That just uh, because my brain has farted it out. Back to your point, Shane. Uh, well, no. To be fair, having good game design is a great way to have less arguments. But as we said, we're not going to get no rules arguments, and like it can be very different. Like. like Say in Magic the Gathering, like if you're at a Magic Gathering tournament and you have a like level three dodge or whatever around, like who has like literally done an exam to say that they know the most pernickety of the rules, mm. then you can be relatively think that you have gotten your rule uh, your rules from on high and arguing is pointless. Mm. But if you're at say just a random a random game and one player is like hey you should ha- take mana burn for for this and like they don't realize that mana burn has been removed from the game 10 years ago mm. and ha- like how do you fight that argument it's just like 
Well, pull out a rule. Yeah, pull out yeah, any printed yeah, rule book. Do they still I don't print think the there rules? is. No. I think the. I know. Yeah. I think the, the rule book. The printed rule book for our, for. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, look, you point the towards the for... most current version of the rules. Go look, mana burn. If, if you can find mana burn in here, then I'll concede the point. Um, but you th- you're right, though. It's it's a set. Magic or games like that have arbiters. They have exams to check if you know the rules. And they have rule compendiums you can point to and go. This, I think you, you've probably you're talking about a more fine line example uh, of the weird interaction between the millions of magic cards that now exist. Um, I think it's still only hundreds and thousands, but yeah, yeah. it's like. Yeah. Well, I, I'll just for a quick channel fireball and find out how many magic cards there are. Um, what the fuck are layers? Excuse my French. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, it's. These are concrete rule sets that presume, but they're so complicated that you have to have adjudicators who specialize in knowing if the if an interpretation is right or not. Um, I I guess that's some people, one way we could go. Some Daunting. people will just never understand the stack. It just it's just like no, it should be in the order it was it's, done, not the order. <laughs> the stack's oh, like it's like the offside oh rule. God no! It's like the offside yeah, rule of like, geeks. It's like well, look, it's. <laughs> When you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, you don't got it. Yeah, but like, not everything has tournament level rules. Like, mm. you get an awful lot of um, glitzy, uh, Do you brand wanna... new Kickstarter backed um, uh, board games. And then, you know, you end up, there's a couple of vague rules that don't interact well. And the only known is just like, uh, there's a tweet from the game designer saying, "Oh, I'll, I'll check that out," uh, but it's like five months old. There's no sign of any errata. Would you like, Would you like to opine as to why some games have such tight rules? Uh, the counter to the you know, okay, lots of games have loose rules and and very and they get open to interpretation. Why is some games like Magic, like Blood Bowl, say, uh, have very tight rules and very clear interpretations? And because they have tournament play. Well, I was about to say money. tour play. Yeah, I think money, money and competition breed out all the loose rule sets, so that you only have uh, games that are either very, very clear and uh, kind of concise, easily understandable rules like chess and blood bowl, or games that allow for incredibly complicated interactions, but invest in having entire sort of armies of people whose job it is to make sure that uh, when it comes to that weird interaction between soul lust and uh, goblin berserker, then, you know, <clears throat> there's an answer. And it's an answer that everyone could ex- accept, you know, at that moment. They might, uh, they might argue later. Yeah, because otherwise you're looking at, lo- you know, loopholes and decks built around those loopholes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, say say you've got like your in uh, Owen would be actually great for this, but like say you're you've got your indie darling off of, um, Kickstarter, off yeah. of uh, yeah, yeah Kickstarter, itch, sorry, itch, 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 and itch. and you you're you're three or four games in, and then this weird interaction shows up, okay. and player A has got oh no, it's definitely it has to work this way, and player B goes no, that's everything. Like you, at a certain point, like you have to say, you don't have a, you don't necessarily have a rata from the game designer. You don't necessarily have a referee who can make the final decision. I guess where's where's the value prospect in? Are you are you going to make arguments that are in favor of that this one game that we're having right this second? Are you going to have arguments that are ga- uh, in favor of? How to how to better run this board game uh, X number of times in the future, or are you going to make arguments in favor of the group that we have, the people that are around the table, and what's best for them? And screw the game itself. Let's just make sure that we don't, you know. I mean, okay, having yeah. a fall, having a falling out over a board game that was not, re- I guess, a very strong friendship. But at the same time, <laughs> social etiquette is not nothing people yeah people can get upset over 
a lot of different things. And, often, and, and, often the more trivial <coughs> something is, the more likely they are to get upset because there's less social consequence for getting upset. Hmm. I I think there's an interesting uh, question wrapped up. Sorry, it is an interesting question, but there there's it's slightly behind the line in that this question about am I going to be proven right in the or is my argument going to be accepted right on this occasion? Or is there a bigger argument that we're having about how we should play the game over the longer term? Which I think is, is quite interesting. People who are, you know, 100% invested in just winning, you know, this interpretation, if it goes my way, despite the fact that it is crazy, uh, will mean I win this particular game on this occasion to today. That's, uh, that's something that people can do, I guess. Um, but it's not, if you're, it's not an argument in good faith. Yeah, and it's certainly yeah, not an argument if you're, in favor of a good game. Yeah, if you're going to argue uh, an interpretation one way for this match and then the next match you're going to uh, uh, argue the opposite way, um, then you, your arguments are not in good faith. And People will notice and they'll talk and it, it is a step away from simply being labelled as a cheat. You are you are very close to simply cheating if that's the way you uh, if that's the way you play and people will notice and I've heard stories in our own social circles like okay well you know I we'll accept your your view you win this game never playing you again those people very quickly have to up sticks and find other groups to play with because they don't argue in good faith and um, or as you said they're they always argue in the moment. For, uh, mm. for a positive outcome in the very short term, uh, I've I, I sometimes get to sit down with uh, with sometimes guest on the show Conrad Kinch, uh, mm. and we play Range of the Shadow Deep. And the thing that we end up arguing about, and and it's genuine, it's an exchange of views uh, with low stakes, is our interpretation of the game rules as they you know as they pertain to the moment we're in, because if we argue one way it's going to be really bad for us it's a cooperative game if we argue another way uh, or interpret another way it's going to be you know we'll get away with it but we're always we've we've often had discussions that well yeah you know we, we this character would survive if we interpret it this way but we kind of know that we're going to play this game again and again and if we continue to interpret that way then the game's kind of broken so we tend to argue ourselves into bad outcomes in the moment because we know in the long term, the game will be better for it, and we'll continue to enjoy mm. it. Because if we didn't, I think we'd stop playing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see the logic in that. Yeah. Yeah. So it hurts. It's like, it hurts, but it's good medicine. But it's good medicine. Hmm. Yeah. I think that I think that's a a general thing to be had in argument is that sometimes losing the argument at the mo- a moment might feel sucky now, but it might lead to better games. The uh, greater in, in good. The- <laughs> Yeah, you kind of step back to that. Look, take take a step back from your own invested position and look at the, the wider impact. You know, how's this going to affect the the mood of the table, the, the way the game is played long term, uh, you know, our, yeah, our sort of cohesion as a group. Uh, and and if it comes down to it, there's always solo gaming. It's a, it's a growing <laughs> industry. <laughs> when, mm. when, you're just, when you're sick and tired of arguing, even at the best of intentions just go, go play with yourself okay <laughs> again the weird sex advice um <laughs> so <laughs> yeah solo play um where no one's going to know it's uh, what's that mean how will they find out they'll know um yeah i don't i have nothing to say about solo play I like literally nothing i, I, I don't do it I'm too busy, uh, too busy modeling. The last, Making models. the closest thing to solo play I've done is the fighting fantasy books back in the day. Oh yeah, oh, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what? Uh, uh, yeah, every all game. Our... Sorry. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm massive. Um, I'm playing uh, Dragon's Dogma at the moment, which is a really weird. Right. It's very, very weird RPG. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, you usually find on sale books. Let's wrap this up. Uh, are we we're agreeing that we've come to a conclusion? Not quite, but go on. Go on. <laughs> no, no, I, th- I think yeah, no, we've come to we've come to a, con- a conclusion. This that uh, argument is inevitable, but you by keeping some uh, things in mind 
about you know the group you're in, the health of the game, you can make better arguments. You can uh, win better, lose better, and uh, just have better gaming. Mm. Um, and you know you can design a game better. You you can make a game that's better than Monopoly. Um, and that will have less arguments, but ultimately, what arguments have to be had is a choice for the people who play the game, um, or you know the tournament organizers. Tournaments, mm. I guess. Uh, that was not quite as pithy a uh, uh, conclusion to the argument as I as I thought, but uh, it is fine. Well, if you would like to, you know, vehemently argue against everything we've said, you can join us on our social media and our Discord. You should <laughs> do it. God's darn it! Get get on the discords. Uh, find you may us. not agree with that. <laughs> but fi- oh, we're ready. We're waiting for you. We're sharpening our arguments. Um, yeah, oh. obviously, we'd love to see you uh, see you online somewhere. And uh, if, but if all you want to do is listen, then we will come back to you next week. But right. for now, this party is going to kill that bastard. It's over. <laughs> the party is over. Thank you for listening to the Adventuring Party. If you'd like to leave us a voicemail, you can head on over to SpeakPipe and uh, drop us a line. Or you can join us on our Discord server, where we keep the party going after hours. Uh, Otherwise, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, or Twitter. Or or you can email the hosts at party at theadventuringparty.net. The Adventuring Party is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike Version 3 license. But you probably knew that already. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and look forward to seeing you back here next week. Goodbye.